Hello everyone. Welcome to the class on angina pectoris. In this class, I will explain the pathophysiology of angina pectoris and the drugs used to treat this condition. Now let us see what is this angina pectoris is, which is commonly known as chest pain. Now this word is derived from a Greek word. In this, angina means strangulating. Strangulating means pressing. Strangulating or pressing. Chest pain. Pectoris means chest pain. So literally angina pectoris means strangulating chest pain. Now when you see this pain, the pain originates, look at the diagram, the pain originates at the heart. It goes upside to the left side to neck and jaw and ear and it also radiates to the left shoulder and it reaches till palm. This kind of pain is called as referred pain. The pain originates at heart but it radiates to the upper regions and the lower parts of this left side and that is called referred pain. So this is what happens in angina pectoris. It starts with a radiating pain which is also known as referred pain. Commonly it is known as chest pain. Now we need to understand why this pain occurs. What is happening that causes this pain? Now you can see the pain is a symptom. The symptom is because of an underlying disease and that underlying disease in this case is known as ischemia. Ischemia literally means reduced blood supply. Reduced blood supply. Now to which organ this, this happens? This happens to heart. That means to the heart blood supply is reduced. That is the reason why this is also known as ischemic heart disease. Now, when blood supply to the heart is reduced, it gives a symptom, a pain, and that pain we call it as angina pectoris. Now, what is causing reduced blood flow to the heart? Let us see this one. Now, see, heart is the muscular pump which pumps blood to each and every organ. Now, in this, this thing is called as iota. From this iota, whenever the heart contracts, all the oxygenated blood reaches to every organ of the body. But heart also requires blood supply to get energy. Now the blood supply to the heart is carried by a special type of arteries known as coronary arteries. You have right coronary artery and left coronary artery. Now look at this word coronary. Nowadays this coronary word is very popular. Uh, corona means crown. When you look that coronavirus in a microscope it appears as crown hence it is named as coronavirus. And these coronary arteries, uh, see how they branch out over the heart. They branch out over the heart as a crown. Hence, they are named as coronary arteries. So, coronary arteries are the one which supplies blood to the heart. Now, look at this diagram. Now, this is a typical coronary artery. Sometimes, lipid molecules will get accumulated inside this coronary artery like this. So, these are lipid accumulations inside a coronary blood vessel. Now, what is happening with this? When this accumulation occurs, blood flow from here is reduced. So to this part, there is a reduced blood supply. And that reduced blood supply is known as ischemic heart disease. And this results in angina pain. So angina pain is occurs because of ischemia or reduced blood supply. And why that, why that reduced blood supply is there? Because of lipid accumulation in coronary arteries. Now, See this, this is what is normal coronary arteries. The diameter is fine, blood will be coming out normally from this artery. Now, second one. Now, see, there is a condition called as atherosclerosis. Accumulation of lipid inside this blood vessel is known as atherosclerosis. So, it is a technical word which describes accumulation of lipids inside a coronary blood vessel. Look at this diagram. So, blood is flowing from here. Because of this lipid accumulation, here the blood flow is reduced. So, the amount of blood coming here will be reduced. This condition is not nothing but ischemic heart disease. Now, sometimes what happens is atherosclerosis will be with a blood clot. That means when this lipid levels are very high, that will cause rupture inside this blood vessel and that causes accumulation of platelets. Platelets will try to block the blood flow. What happens is this lipid accumulation 
causes rupture in this blood vessel and that is surrounded with platelets and that is what causes a blood clot now look at the condition during this black blood clot the condition is even more worsened and the entire vessel is blocked in atherosclerosis condition only the blood flow is reduced but but in this blood clot there is a complete occlusion of blood vessel and this condition is known as infarction infarction means completely there will be no blood coming out of this vessel because there is a 100% block technically doctors will say this condition as 100% block that means the coronary artery is 100% blocked and that condition is known as infarction now infarction occurs when there is no blood supply and that causes total muscle damage muscle will undergo a condition called as necrosis or cardiac muscle death this finally results in heart attack heart attack sorry this results in heart attack now look at this now uh, the entire disease progression will be like this it all starts with lipid accumulation in coronary blood vessel in this lipids again the bad cholesterol is known as low density lipoproteins in human body there are many types of lipoproteins are there ldl hdl idl vldl out of these things ldl is considered as bad cholesterol because this is the lipid which is accumulating at this junction so whatever the lipid is accumulating here that is ldl or low density lipoprotein and this condition results in atherosclerosis now atherosclerosis will cause a a, a disease to this coronary blood vessel hence the disease is known as coronary heart disease it is commonly referred as coronary heart disease now coronary heart disease results in ischemia or ischemia means reduced blood flow to the heart this causes angina pectoris angina pectoris is nothing but chest pain if the condition aggravates if total blood supply is blocked it results in myocardial infarction also known as heart attack so angina is a before step for heart attack so it starts with pain in the heart if the condition is not taken care of it will cause myocardial infarction and heart attack so this is this is how angina pain originates now getting back to the types of angina there are three major types of angina are there first one is known as stable angina stable angina is also known as atherosclerotic angina the reason why it is called as atherosclerotic angina means it occurs due to atherosclerosis do you remember atherosclerosis is nothing but when the red blood cells red i'm sorry red blood vessel has got lipid accumulation it reduces the blood flow and that is what is called as atherosclerosis because of this one angina pain occurs and that pain is known as stable angina see this lipid accumulation occurs over a period of time hence it is also known as chronic angina and it the the lipid accumulation occurs stably that's why it is called as stable angina now the other important thing is it is known as exertional angina if someone has got this atherosclerotic block when they when they do some work when work load and heart is increases the blood hence the blood supply to the heart is reduced they get a mild angina pain so that is the indication they need to understand they have this angina pain so this is this condition is also known as exertional angina or angina of effort when you try to put physical effort they feel a kind of pain in the chest that indicates there is a lipid accumulation in their coronary blood vessel and that is blocking the blood flow to the heart now the next type is known as unstable angina unstable angina is also known as pre infarction angina now this unstable angina is when this atherosclerotic block is surrounded with a blood clot that will results in unstable angina if if this is not immediately treated it immediate it results in infarction so it cause hence it is causing infarction it is known as pre infarction angina now unlike stable angina this angina could occurs during rest also when people are sleeping when they have this atherosclerotic plaque suddenly the platelets may get accumulated and block completely they, they may block this 
blood vessel and that will results in infarction to avoid this condition doctors will suggest cardiac patients to take aspirin aspirin will inhibit this platelet formation they will be every night they will be taking an aspirin tablet to avoid this platelet activation that is nothing but unstable angina now the last one is known as vasospastic angina look at this diagram see this part coronary spasm sometimes this coronary blood vessels will undergo a cause of spasm is sudden contraction because of this sudden contraction here the blood supply reduces again that results in ischemia and then angina this is also known as variant angina or prince metal angina this is the name of the scientist who has described about vasospastic angina so basically you have these three types are there stable angina unstable angina vasospastic angina now let us see the pathophysiology of angina pectoris now you need to understand why all these things are happening now see the blood supply blood will carry oxygen and nutrients heart every organ every tissue needs this oxygen to get energy now all the time heart is contracting day and night it is under continuous contractions so heart demands a lot of energy energy will be provided by oxygen delivery so there is a constant oxygen demand and it has to be met that oxygen should be supplied in proportion when there is a balance between oxygen demand and supply it is a normal homeostatic condition which is known as balance but when oxygen demand is more than oxygen supply that condition causes ischemia as we have seen this ischemia is what causes angina pectoris now we need to understand what will determine oxygen demand what will determine this oxygen supply look at the conditions first one if heart rate is increased usually the normal heart rate in an adult normal individual is around 70 beats per minute so this is called as heart rate so per minute there will be 70 beats if from 70 if it is increased to 100 beats per minute the workload on heart is increased and oxygen demand increases so heart rate will determine oxygen demand next one contractility see heart will contract so that the blood will comes out of this heart now if the force of contraction is increased it needs more amount of work to be done so oxygen demand further increases so increase in contraction results in increase in oxygen demand next preload and afterload relates to the amount of blood present inside this heart if the volume of blood inside the heart is more that increases ventricular wall tension when the wall tension is increased oxygen demand increases so these are the main determinant which will increase oxygen demand one increase in heart rate two increase in contractility next ventricular wall tension now coming to the determinants which will determine oxygen supply the first one is coronary blood flow so from coronary arteries will supply blood sup blood flow to the heart so that blood flow will determine oxygen supply regional myocardial blood flow indicates particular reasons in the heart again both of them more or less a similar one so when the balance is not met or when the oxygen demand is more than oxygen supply then ischemia and angina pain occurs so this is the pathophysiology of angina pectoris now coming back to the drugs used to treat these conditions we have couple of classes are there the first class of the drugs are known as nitro vaso dilators as the name indicates vaso means blood vessel dilator means an agent which is increasing the diameter of blood vessel so when you increase the diameter of blood vessel the blood flow to the region is increased hence this part is enhanced or otherwise oxygen supply to the heart is increased so this class is known as nitro vaso dilators which will increase the blood supply or oxygen supply to the heart now next class there are drugs known as beta blockers here beta means adrenergic beta receptors beta blockers when you block the receptors they will reduce heart rate they will reduce cardiac contractility that means you are reducing oxygen demand see in order to treat angina pectoris either you can reduce oxygen demand or increase oxygen supply nitrovasodilators will increase oxygen supply whereas beta blockers will reduce oxygen demand not only beta blockers 
we have calcium channel blockers are there calcium channel blockers will block the entry of calcium calcium is required for contraction when calcium availability is reduced heart rate contractility also reduced they will also reduce preload and afterload now along with these three classes one more class is there they are known as anti platelets remember platelets will will worsen the condition of angina and may cause myocardial infarction aspirin belongs to this class along with this statins are also used we'll see in detail about this classification in the next lecture